What was funnier, the part where your friend cheated on me or the part where she attempted to off herself with me on the phone with her after I exposed her for cheating? Now I guess we can pretend for a second that maybe she thought that it wasn't that serious between us. That what she said here, that she loves me with all her heart, was... pretend. Or this one, where she loves me so much she's ugly crying. Let's pretend all of that was pretend to her. Does it justify her driving into a telephone pole with me on the phone? Now she specifically told me, Zach, maybe I wouldn't have cheated if you were here. So does us being long distance justify what she did? Huh? Please answer, I'm so curious to know. Now if she's that good at pretending to be in love, imagine how good she is at pretending to be your friend. Giggling at abuse and trauma is, is a little f just teeny bit, even if you are her friend. Drunk dental receptionist who and told 13 year old boy, I'm going to ride you till morning, spare jail. This story is coming straight out of the UK, so that shouldn't be surprising. And it also helps that her victim was male. So it's going to be difficult to say the least to convince this judge that this poor child is a victim. And for those in the audience who don't believe me, who don't believe that a judge would hold that type of perspective, that would encourage him to not send this monster to jail, I have a few tweets to show you that may change your opinion. Drunk sexually assaults minors, and the internet is once again loudly perpetrating the rhetoric that <laughs> is okay if the child consents. From verified account, Chris Lee 565-22750. I prayed every night at 13 that some shit like this would happen to me. Life really isn't fair. From verified account, at Jack Spitz 5. Where was this gal when I was 13? Only in my dreams. From at LaFrank, I would love to be that boy. And from this random account, why did this never happen to me at 13? And I want to make the record so explicitly clear that this child did not consent at all. And even if he did, that wouldn't make things better, but... You have to say these things. Never thought that had to be said, never thought that had to be explicitly said, but unfortunately, we share this planet with a whole lot of people who are too fucking porn-addled and cumbrain to consider that maybe a 13-year-old boy didn't want to be assaulted. They can't step out of their fantasy for 10 fucking seconds. Not debating if what she did was good or bad, I simply want to ask, what changed in society for kids now to have this reaction, whereas for something like this to happen was the dream of many boomers through millennial-aged boys? Reaction? What reaction? Oh, this one, where the 13-year-old who has ADHD said he was so traumatized by the encounter that he tried to take his own life. That's the reaction that this guy has a problem with. He has a problem with a child feeling violated after he was assaulted and forced upon by a 27-year-old woman. And here's something to consider for those in the audience who might agree with this fucking cave troll. This activity almost certainly happened in the past to young boys in the past. And I'm glad that now in the present, young boys who have been harmed like this feel comfortable going to the police and don't feel bad about saying that, hey, an adult woman assaulted me. Just because something was normalized in the past, or maybe was seen as not a taboo in the past, doesn't make it moral. Young lady felt like someone was entering her apartment, so she installed a camera. Yep, it's her landlord sniffing her underwear. Not only will I be making the quickest trip to the police department, but your face is going everywhere I can put it. On posters, on billboards, on TV ads, Everything, your face will be known. If this isn't the best advertisement for a Nest Cam out there, I don't know what else is. All right, if you don't have security cameras in your apartment, go get one. All right, because apparently creepy people are everywhere and they have access to a universal key. Be aware when going through the drive-thru, cashiers are going live and showing your card information. No, 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 don't stop this. Just encourage everyone to use credit cards instead of debit cards, all right? Let MasterCard, Discover, Visa, whoever you use, go after these people. They have the resources to do it and they will go to jail and you'll get your money back. In my opinion, that's the best way we conquer this problem. And to be honest, the thing that gets me about this post isn't really the blatant theft. It's the fact that there's a whole lot of criminals nowadays who go out of their way to live stream felonies. Like seriously, is it hubris? Is it arrogance? Or is it retardation? I don't know. I don't know, are these people so demonstrably stupid that they go out of their way to live stream felonies? Or do they genuinely think that they're not gonna get caught? I don't know, bro, I have no idea. We all know what the lesson here is, don't use your debit card for anything anymore, because everybody everywhere is trying to steal from you. Woman fined for fighting back too much during sex attack. I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed a serious trend both in the United States and in the United Kingdom where people 
fighting back or defending themselves from violent criminals, whether that be a robber or someone trying to force themselves on you and harm you, for whatever reason, you receive punishment too if you hurt them a little too much. In the United States, there are many individual states here where there's a duty to retreat when you are being attacked by a criminal. Don't pull out that pistol. Don't use that knife. No, no, no. Try to run away. And if you can't run away, I guess you're a victim. I don't know if there's similar laws in the United Kingdom, but it definitely looks like there's similar occurrences of people fighting back and somehow getting in trouble for it. How India's caste system manifests in the Seattle area workplaces and beyond. When Maya tried to get assistance ships to pay for college, the graduating seniors would only recommend people of their own caste to their professors. She also experienced caste discrimination working in the tech industry. Even though she was doing well in her job, her dominant caste manager found out she was Dalit. He began shunning her and ignoring her suggestions and ideas. It got so bad that her colleagues started raising the issue on her behalf. And for those who are unfamiliar with what the Dalit caste is, it used to be known as the Untouchables. It's the lowest caste in the Indian caste system, and the work that this caste would participate in contribute to their stigma and discrimination. Historically, those who were considered Dalit were either unemployed or had roles in society that nobody in the higher castes wanted to deal with, like cleaning up human waste and garbage or dealing with dead bodies. When she volunteered for a project at work, she said her manager told her, you better not touch the project because you're ill-fated. And it might not sound like something major, but for us it completely resonates with the cast and untouchability, because not touching is what all of the dominant cast people have made rules around for so long. That's why we are called untouchables. We're not supposed to touch anything or anyone. This creep was taking pictures of that girl's butt and her fiance called him out. Back off. Back off. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, 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 you're disgusting, man. Children's shoes for sale, never worn. Russian Telegram channel mocks the death of a six-year-old Sofia Holoniska who was killed in Russia's missile strike on Chernihiv yesterday. The post has nearly 47,000 laughing reactions from Russian social media users. 47,000 people. 47,000 people thought it was funny, or at least agreed with the death of an innocent child. It's really crazy what a profile picture and a touch, a smidgen of anonymity will do to a motherfucker. But hey, I prefer this over actual names and profile pictures because that anonymity encourages honesty. We are seeing the true feelings of 47,000 people. While completely deplorable and haunting, we can take solace in knowing that this is not a joke. This is not someone trolling. This is not someone being edgy. These are honest thoughts and reactions from 40 seven thousand people death of philly teacher found with 20 stab wounds ruled suicide after deeply flawed investigation deeply flawed deeply flawed oopsie oopsie doopsie <laughs> we messed up this woman who was stabbed 20 times apparently didn't kill herself it was a deeply flawed investigation it was our bad we just you know had some crossed wires like for real <laughs> that's incompetence you just didn't do your job well. Deeply flawed investigation. You fucked up. Like seriously, this was either a complete fumble or everyone associated with this case is a fucking spastic. You guys can't see the image of her body. Obviously, there's no way I could get away with that. Um, but there's a giant, and I mean giant, gaping wound on the back of her head and 20 other stab wounds across her neck and chest. And you're trying to tell me that a bunch of police officers and a couple of detectives thought that this was a suicide? How in the world is that possible? How does that happen? 14 year old boy shot while putting up Halloween decorations. 
A 14-year-old boy is recovering after being badly injured in a shooting in Southern Colorado. The teen has been identified as Isaac Martinez, and the shooting happened on September 9th on West Ash Street in Pueblo, while the boy was hanging up Halloween decorations. You can't even put up Halloween decorations safely, because there's going to be some maniac out there ready to harm you for no apparent reason. Imagine being the parents of this child. One moment, your son is lighting a jack-o'-lantern, and the next, you're escorting him on an ambulance ride to the ICU. Personally, as a parent, I'd become a vigilante. I'd turn into the Red Hood that fucking moment. My kid would get justice. This 14-year-old child deserves justice. I really hope Halloween isn't ruined for him. I really hope that this year he can enjoy it. When a firework goes through your roof and explodes in the attic. These stroke fireworks need to be taken off the market. There's so many videos of these fireworks exploding close to the ground, causing damage wherever they land. The firefighters said we were lucky because it almost hit the gas line. Houston man gets $1 bond after being accused of and impregnating a 16-year-old girl. Now that already sounds pretty bad, but... Of course, it gets so much worse. The reason why he received a $1 bond is because the district attorney fucked up and didn't indict this man with statutory <laughs> charges within 90 days. And because he's so fucking broke, by law, the judge has to offer this man a reasonable bond. And because he has no money, the lowest bond you can give somebody is $1. This man was accused of getting a 16-year-old girl drunk and then assaulting her. She would go on to find out she was pregnant three months later, and then he would be arrested a year after that. During the investigation, DNA was collected from him, and the evidence proves that he absolutely did assault this young girl. The only thing that's remotely positive about this story is that even though his bail is $1, as of today, he couldn't find four quarters to put together, and he's still in jail. He hasn't posted the bond. And according to the judge, if he were to post the bond, he would be given house arrest with an ankle monitor and then be prevented from interacting with the victim or other children until his court date. Nestle, bro, never disappoints. This corporation is really telling its customers, hey guys, we'll have to raise prices if you don't want us to use the West African child slave labor that helps us process the cacao beans. Now, maybe you guys disagree with me, but I think I'm speaking for most people who enjoy chocolate that we really wouldn't mind spending a little bit more money if that meant that these people would actually be fucking paid. Portland area mom gets 30 days for waterboarding baby and putting him in a freezer. The woman reportedly waterboarded her baby and placed him in the freezer as a test to see whether the father would take any notice. Well, I guess he noticed because your demonic ass is in prison. Somebody had to notice. Even if it wasn't him, you got someone's attention. That someone being law enforcement. Thank God somebody called the cops. Thank God somebody noticed what the fuck you were doing. Friday, Canadian Parliament honored a 98-year-old Ukrainian immigrant who fought the Russians in World War II, Yaroslav Hunka. And he's a pretty notable and infamous guy, mostly because he fought with the Natsoks during the Third Reich as a part of the 14th Waffen-SS. Wow, look at all of these people clapping. All of these people who are supposed to run your nation being incredibly ignorant and not doing one single Google search. You'd really think that in a room full of politicians and lawmakers, one person would perform some due diligence. And our final post of the day comes from WRTV. Six month old baby nearly eaten alive by rats while in bassinet in Ennsville home. According to hospital records, the attack was nearly deadly. The baby needed a blood transfusion from the amount of blood loss he suffered. Three adults now have been charged with neglect of a dependent. Obviously, these parents don't care, so to expect them to learn anything from this is ridiculous. Why do some people just have children for the sake of having children? I don't understand. What's the point of creating a life, something that is wholly dependent upon you? Why do that if you have no intention of taking care of that life? If you don't care that much, if you're prepared to give your child so little thought to such an extent that they're being eaten alive by pests, then why maintain custody? It is incredibly easy to give that baby up for adoption. You could have given that kid a chance to have a family that cares. But no, we don't live in the land of milk and honey. We don't live in a utopia. 
We live in a world where someone will go out of their way to create a life and then neglect that life by leaving it in a bassinet to be eaten alive by rats. What's up everyone, it's your boy Aileris aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below and leave a like if you liked the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing. And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you can get these notifications every time. It is finally spooky month, it is finally October, so I think personally, you guys are overdue for a little spooky marathon. Go ahead and tell me what type of content that you want me to cover during this month that you think is spooky in the comments down below. I am open to all requests. We need to make this month as scary and spooky as possible. And to be honest, I wouldn't be able to do that without my Patreon supporters, so a big thank you to Zenith2A, Mr. Sandman, Mike, Sleepy Dragon, Power Lover, Sherry Morrison, Tron Destroy 23, Fitz Chivalry, Code Connor Purvis, S16, Squish, Rare Days, Mr. Bean, My Golden Experience, James Tucker, BMX, X30, Cinnamon Sticks, Scott, The Fake Musician, Buckethead, Samantha Bellhart, Admin Faneker, Bloody Hunter, Keely, Dundernets Hawk, and Noah. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description. One in my merch store and one in my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.